father is shot, they don't care. They don't care if they come back minus an arm, minus a leg, or all intact, but so damaged by PTSD they can't relate to their families, that they can't hug their children. You know, you know, mothers, I've heard mothers, and they talk about women not being on the front line. Well, that's a lie. And that's an issue, that's an issue that's a real problem because there are women that are in the tanks, that are gunners, that are on the front line, if you will, that are in combat just as much as the men are. And they come back home and they try to file claims for PTSD from combat duty, but because as women they can't technically right. be assigned to combat duty, they're not getting that treatment. They're not getting that respect. I don't know if you want to say respect. Right. That understanding is a better yeah. word. That's that's very interesting. Um, I, I think we, we've sort of talked about some of this before, and. <laughs> I guess the, the, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about, and, and this, was, this is something that I have heard before, and um, a statistic that I have heard before, and it's a scary statistic, and I don't want to scare anybody out there, but, but um, this, this um, statistic that says that women in the military, I think one in four or one, one in three, three are, are sexually abused okay. yes. in the military. And that's who reports it. And right. right, and I, I have read that. I've seen that statistic, and it's a scary, scary. Th I don't want to discourage women from joining the military. No, but I mean, but it was reported a, just last week by uh, NPR and um, Politico. Yeah, um, that's a very scary statistic. It is, and, I, and I, there's also men that get raped in the yes, military. Yes, there are. Oh, yeah, and that's reported even less. Right. I, I'm I mean, sure. But that comes from that that society, that culture. I yeah. mean, that's how they train. They train the military trains. It's men and women to just be killers. It right. desensitizes Desensitize. them. Tear you down. And, and that's exactly what it does. I mean, yeah. that I can attest to. I can attest yeah. to the training. I did the training. Sure. I mean, they forced me to stab a life-size dummy with a bayonet, you know, until they believed that, you know, I could do it or whatever. Because you weren't able to stop until very driven you know yeah. and, and that's what yeah. they do and and it's a horrible thing I mean you know you you would need a military for defense and you train for defense but you don't have to train to be vicious killers to be vicious rapists there are many stories out there and you can search the internet for all the stories about the horrific things that are done to both men and women um, sure. That's that are great. in, I mean, you're supposed to be in the military and you're supposed to be able to trust the man or woman in uniform beside you. Right. You have to be able to. You, you're supposed to have sure. to be able to. But that's not always the case because yeah. that person beside you couldn't be a rapist. You know, the, it, it, it happens. I mean, I've seen yeah. it happen. And the system doesn't support the victim. Mm -hmm. The military system does not support the victim in those cases. It's very slow to change. In the and I hope it is changing. Um, I really do. That, that's a very scary thing. Military sexual trauma and PTSD are supposed to be the two signature uh, injuries of, of the Iraq and Afghanistan troops. The, it, the, the highest incident of actual problems coming out of with the return, from the returning right, soldiers. Right are reports of PTSD and sexual trauma, military sexual trauma. And one of the things that the VA system lacks for women in particular is there's a certain amount of PTSD that there's PTSD that re, that's specifically um, from being a female in the military, being raped, and the whole system trying to report the rape and not being listened to. Mm -hmm. um, and there are not VA psychologists and psychiatrists not enough trained to treat women. I think the last report I read, there were only four in the nation mm -hmm. specifically trained to treat right. female victims of rape who suffer from PTSD. And I hope that's changing. I really well, do. Not I, fast enough. Not fast enough. N nothing ever happens fast enough, but I do hope that um, that, that is changing. And I, our guest last week I, I left me somewhat hopeful about that. Um, Okay. She's certainly working very hard at that. But, um. One of the things before we end I'd just like to mention, on July 10th in Boston, the Answer Coalition, and that stands for Act Now to Stop War and End Racism, mm -hmm. 
is putting on a demonstration in Boston, Massachusetts. There'll be transportation. If you go to answercoalition.org on the internet, sure. um, you'll I find out. So hopefully, hopefully we've got that. You'll find um, that information, and hopefully everybody will come back, come out to that, okay. and tell Arizona that you can't treat people the way they're treating people. Right. Racism's so got to end. Yeah, yeah. People can visit that website and get some more information. Yeah. And thank you so much. We're out of time, I think. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And good thank luck you for with having your, me. Good luck with your uh, thank gubernatorial you. race. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because I found my wishing well